Hello and welcome to this talk. Now, if we compare populations and groups of people that are low in vitamin D, deficient, to people that have high or adequate amounts of vitamin D, that are vitamin D replete, we find huge amounts of differences. So much so that if vitamin D was a new drug and it could be patented, it would be the world's first trillion dollar drug. If it could be patented, pharmaceutical industries could sell a trillion dollars worth a year. Now that is from a paper by Dr. Michael Hollick. And Dr. Hollick is the one of the well, he's the world's pioneering researcher on vitamin D. And he's just written this paper here. Uh, visit, revisiting vitamin D guidelines, a critical appraisal of the literature and, and a completely readable paper it is. So let's give some evidence now for why vitamin D, if it were patentable, would be the world's first trillion dollar drug. Some of the things it does. So this is directly from the paper here. If the pharmaceutical industry had developed a single drug this is a single drug, just one thing, just the vitamin D, capable of reducing cancer mortality by more than 25%, reducing the incidence of metastatic fatal cancer by 38%, and I think most of us know that metastases is when the cancer starts to spread around the body. And again, this is comparing populations that are low in vitamin D to populations that have adequate vitamin D. These are the differences that researchers have found. Reducing autoimmune disorders by 39%, reducing type 1 diabetes by 88%, um, preventing advance of pre-diabetes to type 2 diabetes by 76%. In other words, many, many people are um, on the way to developing type 2 diabetes, developing insulin resistance, developing high blood sugar. Uh, you can stop them progressing. Many of those, you can stop them progressing onto uh, type 2 diabetes from being pre diabetic. Uh, reducing peripheral vascular disease by up to 80%, uh, lowering the risk of upper respiratory tract infection by 58%, reducing COVID infectivity, how likely someone is to pass COVID on by 54%, reducing COVID-19 infection by up to 74% protection, uh, reducing COVID respiratory distress, distress syndrome by 78% protection, and reducing hospitalizations uh, due to COVID by 22%, and reducing COVID mortality by 45 to 66%. Absolutely incredible. And we did flag up the benefits of vitamin D in February 2020 at the start of the pandemic on this channel. Uh, Matt Hancock stood up in Parliament and said it didn't work, from what I remember. David Davis and myself did advocate for it, but um, <clears throat> I never heard. The chief medical officer, I never heard the chief scientific officer, I never heard the prime minister or any of the politicians say people should increase their vitamin D. Heck, even Anthony Fauci said he would take vitamin, he did take vitamin D. I think he said he was taking 6,000 units a day. Not a peep from, and I'm not lauding, Ant <laughs> I'm not lauding, lauding Tony Fauci, not by any means, but at least he mentioned it. Whereas in the UK, never heard a peep out of these official officials um, uh, we couldn't possibly speculate why not let's keep going um, accelerating covid positivity uh, patients to covid negativity by 66 percent. in other words the, the the rate at which people become negative to testing uh, reducing the risk of preterm births by 62 percent reducing the risk of preeclampsia by more than 50 percent Preeclampsia is uh, in pregnancy, high blood pressure, edema and uh, protein in the urine. And of course, the risk is that goes on to eclampsia, which is, is fitting, which of course is very dangerous. Reducing gestational diabetes, diabetes in pregnancy by 50%. Reducing infant dental caries, bad teeth in children by 75%. Reducing multiple sclerosis by 62%. Reducing colon cancer by 80%, reducing cardiovascular mortality by 67%, reducing autoimmune disease by 39%. If there was a single drug that did all those, the drug would be heralded as a miracle drug. With patent protection, if the pharmaceutical industry could patent this, this single drug sold worldwide would be the first trillion dollar drug. And yet vitamin D will do 
these studies have get demonstrated these levels of differences between populations that are low in vitamin D and populations and groups that have an adequate vitamin D. And yet, these it's just, it's not done because there's no money in it. But if there's a new drug that could be patented, trillion dollars a year, thank you very much. Because there's no money in it, sorry, mate, not interested. Very strange, very strange. The vitamin D provides, uh, the, the sunshine vitamin D provides all these health benefits, especially when an adequate amount is taken to sustain circulating, circulating concentrations of activated vitamin D of at least 30 nanograms per mil. And that is equal, uh, that is equal to 75 nanomoles per litre. With the maximum benefit obtained with concentrations around 40 to 60 nanograms per mil, which is equal to 100 to 150 nanomoles per litre. So at least, this is what we want, at least 30 nanograms per mil, best at 40 to 60 nanograms per mil. So how are we doing against this? Well, uh, the... Guideline Development Panel, U.S. Endocrine Society, 24% more children than adults in the United States have a circulating concentration below 20. And of course, the minimum we're looking for here is 30. And we actually want 20 to 60. How many people are below 20 uh, nanograms per mil in Europe? Well, it's about 40%. So even worse in Europe. So we're not doing very well. Most people are well low on vitamin D. Now, let's look at a, a table here that shows some of the specifics about this. Here we have this here. Now, um, this shows from various studies the levels which were tested for the effect that was, was, was achieved. So we see here that in osteomalacia, so in, in osteomalacia, for example, um, that is uh, weakening and uh, loss of uh, bone mass in adults. It's the same as rickets in children. 100% cure if we have 30 nanograms per mil. And these other conditions we see, for example, if we look at infant dental caries, that was 75% uh, protection if blood levels are equal to or greater than 40 nanograms per mil. So we do see different levels for different conditions based on the study that uh, obtained the data. Um, recent report from the VITAL trial, uh, that's this trial here, check out the link, British Medical Journal. Uh, for the last three years of the intervention, uh, group receiving 2,000 international units of vitamin D daily raised their serum concentrations of uh, vitamin D from 29 uh, to 41. So that's with uh, 2,000 units a day after one year. Um, so trouble is, if people are lower than that, it would take, um, if people are, are very low, then giving 2,000 units a day would only build the levels up really quite slowly. Uh, personally, I'm taking quite a lot more than that at the moment, but of course I can't advise you what to take. But th this gives you an idea of the kind of levels. Once someone is vitamin D replete, Two to 4,000 units a day is probably going to keep them reasonably well topped up. So that was the result from this study. Um, so 2,000 units a day. After a year, they got the levels up to 41.8, which, remember, actually is only on the kind of lower level of what is desirable. So that's the minimum level that we want, the 30. 40 to 60 are the desirable levels, according to this paper. Uh, many are below 20. Um, but taking 2,000 units a day for this group of people after one year produced results of 41.8 nanograms per mil. Now, of course, this will vary quite a lot with individuals. Some people, that'll be plenty. Other people, it won't be enough. This is the problem. But that was this particular group. Uh, this group had 39% fewer confirmed autoimmune diseases than the placebo group, but the placebo group was still allowed 800 international units a day which is probably the official guideline or over the official guideline in the UK, because it would be unethical to say to people to not take any vitamin D at all because it does so much. So really, we've got this huge benefit, this 39% fewer confirmed autoimmune diseases. 
uh, from people taking 2,000 units a day to people taking 800 units a day. And just out of interest, the National Institutes of Health say that 5 to 8% of people in the United States have an autoimmune condition. So by no means a rare disorder. Now, um, the problem is we can't give blanket advice on vitamin D. I'm taking about 8,000 a day at the moment myself, but that, that, that's just me um, because I, I've done some tests and I need that much to get my blood levels up. Many people will get their blood levels up on lower amounts. That's why we can't give blanket advice. That's why we need to test and titrate the levels up for every individual. So is this being done? Well, the National Institutes for... And we're lucky in this country. We have National Institutes for Health and Care Excellence. Nice. Now, this has got excellence in the title, so this one must mean that the care is excellent, which, of course, is good to hear. Um, uh, we also have um, freedom of speech in this country. I know this because uh, the Prime Minister said so in the Oval Office, so it must be true. And care must be excellent. So, yeah, but both of these things must be true. Uh, so, nice... When should I sus suspect or test for vitamin D deficiency? That's the reference there. That's the question that healthcare providers will ask. And they say, do not routinely test vitamin D deficiency in people who are asymptomatic. So they actually say, don't test people that are asymptomatic. And the people that are symptomatic, they give various uh, musculoskeletal conditions. Now, I think it's important to note that um, before people get um, cancer, they're asymptomatic. Before people get autoimmune disease, they're asymptomatic. Uh, before people get type 1 diabetes, they're asymptomatic. Uh, before people get uh, advanced type 2 diabetes, they're asymptomatic. In fact, oh, come to think of it, before people get virtually any of these diseases, they're asymptomatic. Um, before people get colon cancer uh, they're asymptomatic before people die from cardiovascular disease they're often asymptomatic so really it's a bit strange this guideline saying that we should only test people that are symptomatic because in that case we're going to miss out on all of the benefits of vitamin d um that are preventative well but there you go they're, they're the national institutes for health and care excellent guidelines so they must be uh, excellent. So if vitamin D could be painted, it, it's the worst world's first billion dollar drug. Quite fascinating. Now, on a completely separate matter, ju just for uh, out of for fun, really. Um, Joe Rogan uh, kindly said, "This is this is my video here. Um, pretty fascinating deep dive into the Shroud of Turin on." Uh, on one of the videos I made a few months back on the Shroud of Turin, which many people have watched. And uh, it won't fit on the screen. Let's go down a bit. There we go. So th 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 <laughs> this was the effect here. You can see the increase here when uh, when uh, it went on Joe Rogan. So quite a good uh, <laughs> increase in number of views. And uh, so, so that means that the views have actually gone up to 1.8 million, which is good, of course. And we had this uh, sudden... Uh, increase here when it went on to uh, when it went on to the Joe Rogan show uh, onto the Joe Rogan um, Twitter account so thanks for that Joe appreciate it so vitamin D not patentable never mind if it was paintable patentable trillion dollars a year trillion dollars that's a thousand billion isn't it Pity there's not more motivation for preventing disease and less motivation for making money. But thank you for watching.